Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. We have a great show for you tonight. Standing by in the wings, we have John Cornette and Troy ready to play a couple more uh, songs for us at starting into the show. Casper Leach is here to co-host the show. We have some film clips. Uh, we'll be looking at a very disturbing song from a Toronto writer that has uh, some very powerful yet uh, frightening video at halftime. A uh, song produced by Reason Magazine called No Knock Raid. And a film clip with Dr. Levesque and Willie Nelson coming up. So stay tuned as we bring on our infamous Dancing Cannabis Leaves. John Cornette and Troy. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, we didn't get to finish this song last week. Uh, this is called So Good. I want to thank uh, Mr. Bill uh, Appel for inspiring this song. So Good. We like train wreck Northern Lights We like Shrek Sour diesel Life is good Life is good Life is good For you And me So good So good So good so good It don't matter which you like No matter how you do it This matters that you do it right And get down to it So good So good But purple haze, we like cheese too. Cinderella. Life is good. Life is good. Life is good. So good, so good, fine Colombia, I'm Popo So good, so good. Thank you. That was so good. So good, that's true. That's uh, John Cornette and Troy. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll have them back on at the end of the show with another song. Welcome to the show again, Casper. Thank you very much. Honored to be here. Honored Welcome to be here. Welcome you uh, guests. It is uh, a month and one day from uh, the ballot 
November 6th. Of course, here in Oregon, they get mailed out on uh, the 19th. So uh, we are only two weeks away before the, the ballots get dropped in the mail. So we can uh, expect the vote is coming up. We're going to vote on ballot measure 80 here in Oregon, of course. And that will regulate the sale of marijuana to adults, uh, legalize industrial hemp, let people grow their own cannabis. Unfortunately, I guess a lot of the media have been focusing with editorials in the past week saying that we've gone too far with this bill. And oh my we're, gosh. We're, uh, Freedom. We'll yeah. do that. Yeah, the, uh, the bills in, in Washington are more incremental and they successfully built a pretty powerful coalition. And unless I'm mistaken, they said the same thing about uh, uh, re-legalizing the use of liquor during the other prohibition. They, oh, they're going too far. They're going to let people make corn squeezins in their, in their uh, basements. And they're going to be using moonshine out of their bathtubs. It's going to be crazy. Ethel will be drunk all night. Grandpa won't be working. And society did just fine, didn't it? Did a lot better yeah. because uh, you know, Oregon led the way in ending uh, alcohol prohibition. We passed Measure 7 in 1932, uh, more than a year before the uh, Volstead Act, which was a constitutional amendment, was overturned. And so New York led the way in 1927 by removing all criminal penalties from the sale of alcohol. And I think there were several other states, uh, seven well, if I'm right. One of the things that struck me most about the documentary that was done on PBS about prohibition mm -hmm. was, oddly enough, the very last scene when prohibition finally ends and uh, the president of the United States turns to the mayor of New York and says, now we can take the money that we were spending to try to enforce an unenforceable law and use it to, to make jobs in this country. That was just an amazing thing, and that's exactly what we can do now. If we end this prohibition, we can start using the money that was used to enforce an unenforceable law to create jobs in this country for people who are desperately trying to find work that is of good wage to cover the needs of their family, put their kids through college, and take care of their own mortgages instead of having to, as we've heard in the past, uh, have a handout. I'd like to have enough money in my bank account that Mitt Romney likes me. <laughs> You know, we uh, uh, know that here in Oregon, the wine industry is a $3 billion a year industry that uh, has creates over 10,000 jobs from agriculture to finance. And uh, the beer industry uh, with microbrews and, and brew pubs uh, is over $2 billion a year. In fact, the Department of Motor Vehicles here in Oregon just this past summer came out with a new license plate, Wine Country their license plate. You know, we are a live show here tonight on October 5th. If you have a question or comment for us, you can call us at 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. We're also streaming on the internet on Ustream.tv. So uh, if you have someone out there uh, anywhere in the world that you think should be watching this show, you can let them know every Friday night, 8 p.m. Pacific time, we're on Ustream.tv. Hi to Redneck Rick, and I'd also like to say that there are two problems facing our country right now that uh, utilizing this wonderful plant for industrial purposes could quickly resolve. First is having a cash crop that can withstand a drought. I think we've had one of those this season. Yeah, and the uh, is, uh, this plant. one of the most severe droughts since the 1950s. And then the other problem that we've been facing, which I've seen an awful lot of uh, comments addressed to on the internet, is the problems of foreign oil and utilizing the oil from overseas to take care of our needs here in America, thus giving our treasure and putting it into the hands of people who want to cause us harm and also not being self-sufficient where uh, we know that from government's own records during World War II, at that time they could produce 20 barrels of oil for every acre of hemp seed that they utilized. Correct, Paul? Yeah, the, uh, the, the hemp seed, when crushed, you know, there's a study from the University of Illinois at Urbana that was published in Notre Dame's journal, The American Midland Naturalist, said that they uh, harvest about 8,000 pounds of seeds per acre. When you press that, you'll get 300 gallons of oil and a residual 6,000 pounds of high-protein hemp seed meal. 
So uh, that's the equivalent of about six barrels of oil, but you also have uh, the ethanol that can be produced both from the leaves and from uh, the stalks. And so, you know, and what we're talking about in that study is feral wild hemp. It's about 15 times more than the average production of seed oil in Canada with the low THC dwarf hemp. Uh, it only has uh, one to three percent THC in those feral wild plants. I mean, they call it Nebraska no high, and it's not much good for uh, the high, but it's very good at producing seed. Now, I also noticed on the internet floating around here recently are uh, some of these companies that are now taking the hemp seed oil and using it to make auto bodies or to make a body for yeah. a high speed boat that There's people a Canadian are playing on. The company Kestrel. Right. That's coming out with. Uh, a new car, I hope to get one of those. And the sad thing is, we are supposed to be a, a progressive country leading the world into a new tomorrow, and yet we are the that's last. That's the myth. Yeah, that's the la we're the last country to utilize this fantastic plant for all these fantastic products that our employment could be putting out, that our, our workers could be producing, and our farmers could be growing a fantastic cash crop to take care of our own needs here at home. And that's what Measure 80 is really about. People try to do this apples, apples, oranges, oranges. The truth is we're talking about one thing only, and that's industrial hemp. We already have medical marijuana, and there are people who utilize it for recreational purposes already. What we're not doing is utilizing it for making paper, fiber, fuels, and medications here at home. We are taking your phone calls tonight, and we have a caller who's standing by. So, uh, welcome to the show, caller. Good evening. I had a question for you. Go right ahead. As a, as a um, OMMP cardholder, I've been utilizing um, cannabis for my medication since the implementation of the law. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of new devices that I'm seeing that I don't have the familiarity about what they are and wondered if you had information to offer. There's like a a machine called the Canis Sig, and that's developed by um, Beverly Hills Cannabis Club and a company named RFMK. They just started selling stocks yeah, even those on are, uh, vaporizers. And what they do yeah. is they take a little uh, vial of uh, cannabis extract. It's usually a purified oil that's been produced from the flowers, yeah. the and then uh, it, it vaporizes it. It looks like a cigarette. And so it's not obtrusive and uh, doesn't, uh, uh, there's different types of extracts that can go in it. Some of them that are just pure THC, THC doesn't really, it's colorless, and well it's odorless, so you don't have uh, the smell. When the terpenes are added in though, it has the, the flavor and smell of cannabis. So you can get it with the terpenes or without the terpenes. So those are vaporizers. That you're not, um, I'm confusing it with the wrong one that I'm questioning. The one I'm talking about, you actually use a combustible. It comes, you preload your cartridges, and you actually use the combustible. It does keep it at a low enough temperature to where it does vaporize. It doesn't actually ignite. And I know I've seen the G-SIG, and the G-SIG is the one I think you're referencing, which uses the oils. Oh, yeah. as well as Maybe the, the one waxes. you're talking about looks like a pin. Some of them look like a cigarette. Other ones look like a pin. Uh, some of them use, yeah, I'm not familiar with all the different brands out there myself, so I'm not uh, up to date on all the new uh, handheld uh, vaporizers. But so I was just talking know, about. And you can explain it better than I can how vaporization is much better for utilizing your medical marijuana yeah. than for smoking. Absolutely, because it takes out all of the peripherals that they claim we so yeah, desperately the don't need. Products. <laughs> Whose products? Your products are fabulous. We all know that. <laughs> and I do want to but my, my comment was that um, so oftentimes it's hard for us to make those purchases. And where would we go to get um, documented information from patients? And another question to add to this, I've, I'm going to vote for somebody. I want to know how they're voting on our behalf. And how is that handled? Do you, do you as an entity through THCF do that? And well, there's that some talk out there about producing a voter pamphlet. Uh, so far that hasn't really happened. So uh, uh, it's probably not going to happen this election cycle. I know I've helped uh, publish one up in Washington State on several occasions. 
Uh, here in Portland, I can tell you that both candidates for mayor have endorsed Measure 80. Um, uh, I can't really give you a lot of guidance outside of that right now. And may I add about the vaporizer? Sure. Every yeah. Tuesday on my show, Time for Hemp, if you tune in and listen on AmericanFreedomRadio.com, 10 to 11 a.m., uh, Kelly Christian from KDK Distributors uh, gives away a free vaporizer to a medical marijuana patient who cannot afford one of their own. In fact, there's an opportunity to get two vaporizers a week uh, out to patients who need them. So make it a point to tune in on Tuesdays and, and on listen the, to the show. On a question on that exact, um, is it a... Is it a vaporizer that's the new style that would be more convenient with people that are impaired? Because that's why like we have, a that's the, why we have two. Uh, one is oh. the type that you plug into the wall and enjoy, and that way, and the other is one that you were talking about, where exactly. you can carry it in your purse or carry it in your pocket and do it on the go. So exactly. I think they have two styles to give away for free. Outstanding. Thank you for your help. Uh -huh. All right. Have a good evening. If you're out there and you have a question or comment for us, give us a call at 503-288. 4442. That's 503-288-4442. If you need uh, more information about our initiative, uh, Ballot Measure 80, you can go to our website at vote80.org. There's the rest of the information there on your screen. You can call us at 503-235-4606. It's 503-235-4606. Or come by our office at 2712 Northeast Sandy Boulevard. Uh, we're there Mondays through Fridays, about 9.30 to 5.30 and uh, other times. So we hope you'll get involved. We have lawn signs available now, bumper stickers. We just got some new t-shirts in. So uh, if you'd like any of those materials, just feel free to come by our office there at 2712 Northeast Sandy or go to our website at vote80.org. Well, another thing that kind of annoys me about the opposition to Measure 80 is they try to focus on uh, the falsehood that this is going to be an out of control, uh, it's going to be just crazy, people are going to be growing everywhere, left and right in their backyards, we're going to have hippies coming in. I don't in see for... anybody growing their own tobacco. Yeah. You know, if somebody and wanted to save some money, they could grow their own tobacco, but how many people do? Same thing with beer. You can make your own beer, but how many people do? The few people I know that do still go to the store and buy that, beer because and they don't the, make enough to... And did that happen when, when medical marijuana passed? I mean, did we go crazy and start growing it everywhere? No. And, and we do yeah. kind of hope that people will start growing it everywhere, 40 acres at a time yeah, for, for paper, industrial fiber, health. and fuel. Yeah. We have another phone call. Welcome to the show, caller. Hello. Hello, all. Paul, this is Steve. Talked Hi, to you Steve. before. Welcome. Uh, I, I asked you a question once in regards to um, being the caregiver and grower for people. And that if there was a patient that was in need that wasn't one of my particular patients, that I could give them what they needed yes. without a problem? Yeah, no, that's, that's right. If you are, have a medical marijuana permit and someone else has a medical marijuana permit mm -hmm. you can legally give them uh, cannabis uh, uh, and then they can they can use it I do that okay. quite a bit well somebody said that the, they changed something in the law no, and I go wait true. am I behind times here no no that, whoever said that's incorrect you can still mm -hmm. give one patient can give another patient cannabis uh, you can't sell it uh, right. You, patients can reimburse other patients or caregivers or growers for their expenses, but not for their time. That's right. what the law says explicitly, and that was passed back in 2005. So if you're selling it, uh, then you can be arrested. Or if you and go over the limits. you're a great part of that. Hmm? And of course, you guys are a great part of that. Yeah, we keep trying to do a good you job. You are. You're doing great. The other Thank thing I had to ask you was about Washington's new law. Uh-huh. Is that kind of... Are they picking and choosing who's able to grow as much as they want? Um, you know, it, it is yet to be determined. So you're talking about the vote on Initiative 502 up in Washington State? That's correct. Okay. Uh, it hasn't really been determined. They say that they'll examine it for a year and they'll make more rules and regulations. But uh, they don't say who will be able to grow it. They do not allow what they call vertical integration in Washington State where uh, the same person could grow it, process it, 
and sell it, just like a brew pub or a, uh, a winery can for their markets. So that's been one of the criticisms we faced, is that we allow people to get all of those licenses and, and have a, a business like that. Uh, the Washington State one, uh, according to the drafters, is uh, incremental and meant to get it over the line and win the election. And there's something to be said for that. Uh, there's some patients that don't like certain aspects of it, but you know it really doesn't affect patients in terms of their ability to get a medical marijuana permit and grow their own. Washington State does not allow a person to grow their own, and they have a limit of one ounce. So you can go be legal when you have one ounce, but if you have 29 grams, if you don't have a medical permit, then you uh, are a felon. Uh, well, no, in Washington, it's a misdemeanor up to 40 grams. So yeah, I've been be through a, the whole, that, their whole court system, along with ours. But um, yeah. um, I do appreciate that, that information and wanted to thank you guys again for all that you've done. Um, hang in there. I was wondering Thanks. if you had any information on, on even cannabinoids even further than that, like uh, e-therapeutics and stuff like that. I'll let you go, though. Okay. And, you know, there uh, are several different medicinal... Thanks. Thanks for your call oh, your question. Okay, I'm listening. Go ahead. Um, if uh, uh, there are several medicinal compounds in cannabis, of course, we all know about THC or tetrahydrocannabinol, and that's a psychoactive ingredient, and it's great as an anti-emetic, and it has uh, cancer-fighting properties. Uh, there's one that has a wider range of medical utility, and that's CBD or cannabidiol. CBD uh, is good for pain, spasm, seizures, uh, and a lot of other conditions, and it's also an antioxidant and anti-tumoral. There's CBC or cannabichromine. CBC has uh, analgesic properties, and uh, CBN or cannabinol. And so they're discovering new, uh, you, new ailments and uh, properties of these substances. All of the major pharmaceutical companies are working to patent extracts or analogs to cannabis, just the way there is a patent on the synthetic production of THC, and it's produced what we call Marinol. Uh, it's Dravenol is one of the, the proper names they use for it, but their brand name is Marinol. And apparently smoking marijuana uh, can help your brain. There's a chemical in your brain that remains dormant until THC is introduced to it. I learned that when I was working with Jack Hare. And I learned here recently from, I was at McDonald's the other day reading the newspaper and it said that people who grew up on a fast food diet have a lower IQ. So I think that's what it's, I didn't, I think, anyway. But apparently marijuana is worse for you than fast food. Okay. I mean, uh, no fast food's better, worse for you than marijuana. That's what that's it was. That's what you want to say. Yeah. Was, well, I, you know. they said that if you eat fast food, it lowers your IQ. I don't know. See, I haven't heard that one. I'll have to go back. Get That's the paper at McDonald's and look at it again. Come across right. on my uh, radar. Anyway, if you're out there and you have a question for us tonight, you can call us at 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. If you have one of those conditions, it was on your screen, and we'll be there again here in just a moment. Everything from chronic pain to multiple sclerosis and neurodegenerative diseases, gastrointestinal ailments like... Uh, Crohn's disease or uh, uh, any of the gastrointestinal ailments, then we have uh, doctors who can help you get permits all the way from Michigan to Hawaii across the country. Give us a call at 503-235-4606. That's 503-235-4606. And well, we're, go ahead. One of the things that is true is that really makes me feel sad is how people will misconstrue that there are people who are using medical marijuana for a real reason. <clears throat> Paul and I both know people who suffer horrible pain and aren't able to digest food, aren't able to even sit up throughout the course of the day without their medication. And uh, we've seen people have a better quality of life because of this remarkable plant. And for people to Mis misunderstand that we're using it for medical purposes is very, very heart-wrenching because these people who are truly improving their path in life are being looked upon as criminals. You know, instead of uh, being debilitated by narcotics who, uh, that are, are handed out like candy for chronic pain conditions, 
uh, cannabis is a lot uh, healthier alternative. And I've seen multiple sclerosis patients and, and several of them I take care of, hi Russ, uh, that uh, were seized up and not able to move and then they take cannabis and then they uh, can move again. You wouldn't even know they had MS. I know this one fellow, Kirk Reed in Michigan, he had gone blind, completely stone cold blind and started eating cannabis and he regained his sight. So uh, cannabis can slow the progression of multiple sclerosis and other neurodegenerative diseases. So we have a caller though. Welcome to the show, caller. Hello, caller. Are you there? Yes. Hi, Paul and yes. Casper. This is Ray Crystal. How are you? Hi, Ray. Very well. How are you doing, Ray? Listen, Ray is one of our calling. top petitioners that helped us put this on the ballot. So. Thank you, Ray. He's a fantastic activist. He works in various parts of the world and donates his time to the cause at so many different levels. Uh, Ray, you do a fantastic job of moving this movement forward. Thank you so much for being part of our team. Well, thank you guys for what you're doing. And, and Measure 80 needs to pass. We have this situation with these, these billboards that are being put up by Max Stemler's group, Protect Our Society, that have a picture of a woman who looks to be uh, a crystal meth addict, uh, like a tweaker, a super tweaker, and above it it says marijuana. What's yeah, it good for? Abs absolutely nothing. And, you know, so we need to protest against this, Paul. We need to go out and, and get the media involved and to see this is the overtop kind of reefer madness that we're still fighting against, a person that should be in jail for criminalizing children and abusing them in a straight uh, ink, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, Simler was, uh, had that, that uh, uh, drug treatment facility they closed down because they had a number of lawsuits against them out of Florida back in the 90s called Straight Ink. And they're also a big supporter in heading Mitt Romney's campaign in Florida. And so they're putting up billboards in Oregon, Washington, and Colorado trying to defeat our legalization initiatives. Um, you know, protesting uh, at this stage of the game, we're just trying to get out the vote and to educate people who are undecided. And so I would just urge uh, people to, to work on that, make sure uh, that people are registered to vote. We're down to uh, about 11 more days to register, and uh, we need to convince people who are undecided why we need to vote on Measure 80. One of the reasons for undecided people is we'll develop new technology to detect impairment while driving under the influence. So uh, uh, we set up a number of uh, penalties for providing cannabis to children. So those are the kind of issues that can actually help us convince the, uh, the undecided voters. When it comes to those posters, you know, I think they are so over the top that people will see them for what they are, a uh, method to try to to influence our vote with misinformation. Obviously, that person hasn't been using marijuana. Uh, they've been yes, using some speed or something, Obviously, like you said. Obviously, that person hasn't even looked at a newspaper since 1952. <laughs> so, what yes. do you think, Ray? And one last thing. One last thing I'd like to say that I really miss Amanda Rain on the show. She was wonderful the last two weeks. She's feeling and a little also, sick this week, uh, so she couldn't make it. She's oh, uh, oh, left the office today. Uh, so yeah, it'd be nice to have her here. We'll see what happens. Have a great night, guys. Okay, Thank you. you too. We have a comment from someone here in the studio audience. Go right ahead, sir. Hi. Um, I had a stroke uh, five years and three months ago. Mm -hmm. Marijuana or whatnot is a miracle in itself. I have mm -hmm. three-fourths of my brain. Mm -hmm. Ganja is a miracle in itself. I agree. Thanks. It really helps with uh, creating new, uh, it's true. new brain cells. Very true. Helps people with strokes. And that's what I meant when I said, you know, it's very sad when people misconstrue the utilization of medical marijuana for recreational use. You know, I don't like that term recreational because it's pejorative. You know, recreation is basketball. Recreation is swimming or bike riding. Marijuana use is not recreational. Re it's, it's social, if anything. And so I think the whole term recreational use just is a misnomer, and it shouldn't be 
recreational use because it's not a recreation. It's, uh, it's just a term that's used to suppress us, I think. Well, but the we are getting a phone call. Let's go ahead and take that. Welcome to the show, caller. Howdy. Hello, Hello caller. Are you, well, I hear somebody there. I was going to say the one term that we should look at most is the one term that you're reintroducing with Measure 80 into the public speaking uh, arena now, and that's industrial hemp. Mm -hmm. And that is going, to what, is going to be what's going to set our farmers mm -hmm. free and our economy free. Yeah. And so, I know biodiesel fuel, that's industrial. Uh, uh, the fiber, that definitely can be construed industrial. But, you know, it makes protein and food and you can pick up a lot of food oh products i don't gosh. think that is industrial i mean you don't want to have industrial food you know so we've oh, been I talking about Santa agriculture well yeah that's a, <laughs> Glows in the dark. agricultural <laughs> hemp might be a, a better term you know it really is there's this false dichotomy about hemp and cannabis cannabis sativa is marijuana cannabis sativa is hemp they're just different varieties of the same plant in fact high thc marijuana produces viable seeds that are good for seed oil and protein, probably a lot more than the low THC uh, feral hemp, and, and no doubt a lot more than the hemp that's grown in Canada and Europe with less than three-tenths of one percent. It also produces fiber. So the hemp products we talk about, which come from the, the stalk or the stem and the seed, they can be produced from cannabis regardless of what the THC content is. In fact, for seed, and seed oil and protein, probably the high THC cannabis has more seed oil and protein. So it's really just a false dichotomy and I think the hemp that they allow with less than three tenths of one percent up in Canada produces about half as much fiber as our feral hemp in the United States with under three percent THC and one fifteenth as much seed oil. But I think if we use a higher THC cannabis for seed oil and protein production that uh, we'll get an even uh, more production of both of those products. Of course, I'm a heretic in the world of, of hemp industries, but if you go out to uh, Rowan's book, The Great Book of Hemp, on page three and four, it says that my companies here in Portland, Oregon, uh, Tree Free Eco Paper and Rope Walk Paper and Fiber were the first companies to import hemp paper and hemp fabric in several generations. Did that as a business from 19, 89 to 1997 when I spent a little bit too much on employees and uh, uh, offices and not enough on inventory. And that's where I started the show in 96 so there was a little bit of overlap at that time. We have a film clip we're going to roll. This is a disturbing graphic video that shows police breaking into people's homes, killing them and their dogs. Oh, no, they're all waving at me. It's not that video, huh? Well, we have a video, so here it is. We'll be back in just a minute. I think. Audience question. I'm gonna. I'll ask one last audience question, and that'll be the last question um, we're gonna go with. And I might. Act, I'm gonna add a little bit to it. Um, somebody's asking about Measure 80, which is the marijuana legalization measure. It's nothing to do with city politics, except Randy Leonard has come out in favor of this measure. Um, so I, I want to ask the two of you if you also endorse this and I'll ask you something I asked Randy uh, do you also smoke marijuana or ha and have you well I'll start with the last two I have I don't now um, and I support measure 80 but I think it has some flaws in it that need to get cleaned up by the legislature but I think we've rounded the corner in this state we're not a it's not a controlled substance anymore let's get real about this We got the same answer. <laughs> yes, not anymore. Yes, there's some problems with it. <laughs> okay. So as we mentioned, uh, both uh, candidates for mayor, Charlie Hale and Jefferson Smith, have both endorsed ballot measure 80 and urge you to vote yes. And so we hope you will. We have a phone call standing by. Welcome to the show, caller. Yeah, I was wondering about the laws compared to Oregon or Washington. Do they, can you go both states? Can you do what? Go upstream. Can you go can upstream? You, well, you know, technically, uh, uh, you don't want to cross 
from one state to another with cannabis, because that bring, could bring in the federal government. However, the federal government doesn't have the resources to deal with most people who have simple possession. Uh -huh. So uh, under our law, people from over the age of 21 would be able to buy cannabis in the new cannabis stores that the uh, ballot measure 80 would uh, introduce. And I believe the same would be true in Washington State under I-502. You'd be able to go into the new stores. Of course, it's going to take a while for everything to ramp up into place. And in, in Washington, they give the, the, they put the, the control under their Liquor Control Commission, and they have a year to uh, develop the rules and regulations. Under our proposal here in Oregon, we mandate that the governor, Governor Kitzhaber, would appoint seven members of a new commission by December 31st and that they'd have to start taking applications for licenses by February 28th. So it'd be a fast track to make certain that uh, our farmers are able to get out there and get a crop in the ground this year so that uh, we can start uh, uh, producing legal marijuana for sale to adults right away. So uh, there isn't any crossover between the two at this point. So if you get, so if you've got a car in Oregon and you get caught over there smoking, you can bust it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. If you, an Oregon card does not protect you in Washington state, there are several states, you're talking about medical marijuana, now I understand. I wasn't sure if you're talking about after I-502 and in Washington and Measure 80 in Oregon both pass, then it'd be legal for adults over the age of 21 to, to be, possess in both states up to an ounce doesn't matter where you got that ounce from, That's not, but you'd be able to possess up to an ounce. But currently, if you're a medical marijuana patient in the state of Oregon, you are not legal in Washington or California. There are five states that you are legal in and the District of Columbia. It's Michigan, Maine, Montana, Arizona, Rhode Island, and the District of Columbia. It's pretty ironic that even wow. though, you know, everyone talks about how it violates federal law, uh, the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., has legal medical marijuana and uh, has reciprocity where they recognize other states' cards. Here in Oregon, our medical marijuana program will issue a permit for any United States resident. And so all you have to do is apply and pay that exorbitant fee to the Oregon Health Authority, which they raised up to $200 per patient. So. Uh, uh, but you aren't, if you, you want to go to Washington, you have to have a Washington physician fill out an authorization for a medical marijuana permit in Washington to be legal in that state. All right, thank you. You're welcome. If you have a question or comment for us tonight, call us at 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. We do have a studio audience down here, so if you'd like to come down, Friday nights and uh, sit in the studio audience, you can just uh, come down to, it's uh, almost the same as our office address in terms of the number. It's 2766 Northeast MLK or Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, right at the corner of Graham, like the cracker, and uh, MLK. We have a studio audience member question, then we'll be taking a question from uh, telephone as well. Go right ahead, sir. Yeah, this may sound like a redundant question from the last caller, but I'm just curious. Um, this is a two-part question. How many ounces can somebody have on them up in the state of Washington? Washington adopted Oregon's rules that were established by the legislature in 2005. So in 2009, Washington adopted those same rules. You're able to have 24 ounces, a pound and a half, and if you have a doctor's authorization for medical marijuana in the state of uh, Washington. And the same is true if you have a medical marijuana permit from the Oregon Health Authority, uh, you're able to have 24 ounces. So both Oregon and Washington together have the most uh, generous provisions in the country. In most states, you're limited to two and a half or three ounces uh, for a medical marijuana patient. But uh, Oregon and Washington both allow 18 ounces or uh, no, 24 ounces or a pound and a half. So if... Um if that's the case, then are we allowed to, so we, we would still get, even though they're the same, we still get in trouble for taking it across the Washington-Oregon border, right? Unless you had a permit for both. 
and uh, uh, if you have a permit from a Washington physician and you know at our clinics we have doctors who are licensed in multiple states so we do offer patients the ability to get a Washington medical marijuana authorization California medical marijuana authorization and an Oregon medical marijuana authorization at the same time but you're only legal if you have an authorization for both states and but your Oregon off your medical marijuana permit from the Oregon Health Authority also makes you legal in those reciprocity states that I was talking about a moment would ago. Would a medical marijuana card be just as, be just as okay as a per permit? No, the, the Oregon Health Authority's uh, permit is only good in Oregon. It's not good in Washington. To have a permit in Washington, you have to have a separate document from a, a Washington licensed physician. So you're your Oregon card does not cover you in Washington, and your Washington authorization from a doctor, there isn't a state program that you have to go to in Washington. Your doctor's authorization is only good in the state of Washington and those reciprocity states, Montana, Maine, Michigan, Arizona, Rhode Island, and the District of Columbia. We have a telephone caller. Welcome to the show, caller. Hi. Good evening, gentlemen. Howdy. Uh, a couple questions. The first is about the Oregon's medical marijuana. And uh, in my opinion, it's been a double-edged sword. Uh, on the one hand, the list of conditions that are acceptable uh, helps a lot of people. But on the other hand, it's pretty well known that there are a lot of people out there who abuse it. And because of that, I think, again, in my opinion, that it's given medical marijuana a bad name. And I'm wondering about comments on that. The other thing I'll ask, and then you can answer on air, uh, I use cannabis for social use. And uh, I don't have a medical marijuana card. Uh, I grow my own, so, you know, it's not like I'm out on the black market buying. So my question to that point is whether the two of you could each name your top three strains uh, to recommend for the home grower. Um, okay, the first point. Thanks for your call. Thanks for calling. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Good luck. Keep your head down. Don't get in trouble. Um... On the first instance, uh, you know, medical marijuana patients, most of them, have very serious conditions. And some, you might not be able to look at someone and realize they have bulging discs in their back or uh, metal rods in their, their legs, but uh, a lot of them do. And I'm not saying that some people don't uh, abuse the medical marijuana program. I think that happens. I think there are people who, uh, uh, you know, use it uh, for uh, non-medical purposes. You know, I have uh, chronic pain issues myself. I'm a disabled veteran, and so uh, I have a permit. When, I, when the law first passed, though, I didn't think I would get one. But after helping a lot of other people get their medical marijuana permit, being a disabled vet myself and in some pain that at times is, is, is very debilitating, I decided to go ahead and get a medical marijuana permit. That said, uh, you know, we at our clinics really have kind of a gold standard where we make certain that we have medical documentation on any patient that comes and gets an appointment and then we do a physical exam. Because we adhere to these strict practices, we've been able to operate all across the country even with scrutiny from all the different states we operate in, medical board and, and doctor license uh, authorities. And so I think there are some people who uh, uh, probably have medical marijuana permits who uh, don't have really serious medical problems, but uh, I think that uh, it helps a lot of patients. And I'd hate to punish those who truly deserve it and truly need it uh, when uh, because of some people and I think that regulating and legalizing marijuana obviously I believe this because I spent a lot of money and a lot of work and uh, 
uh, put myself through uh, scrutiny that most people would not enjoy. Um, that uh, uh, I believe that it should be legal for any adult and that we need to regulate this market and that that will remove the whole stigma of marijuana, uh, it, its illegality, and uh, patients won't have to get a permit to be able to grow their own because any adult will be able to grow their own. Yeah. Go ahead. And I like to add to that, I have a couple of friends who have difficulties at times sleeping, so what do they do? Uh, they go to their local uh, pill pusher and find some Valium. And how that individual gets it is somebody goes to the doctor and abuses a situation and convinces the doctor that they need Valium and they take it back and they sell it on the black market. And there are other people who go in and get diet pills, they sell them on the black market. There are a lot of ways of abusing any system if you really want to abuse it. But uh, at the same time, the uh, way the medical marijuana laws are put in place in this state, it's kind of pointless to do so. First of all, you're paying an additional amount of money just so you can enjoy uh, a social use of this plant. And it doesn't seem to make sense to do that. And, uh, and there's a lot of loops, loops and jumps and hoops that you got to go through to get your card. And just to abuse it for when really all you have to do in this state is start growing it, they'll leave you alone or be low-key about in it. In terms of the favorite varieties of cannabis, uh, I like uh, sativas. I have one in particular I call Lemon Pledge. That's the name. That some I, I've never really named a strain myself. That's one of my favorites. So. And I like uh, I like good. Oh God, this is great. And wow, this is a great hit. Those are those are all good. We have a video that we're going to run now, and it's the one I was talking about a moment ago. It has some very graphic scenes in there, of. Uh, these are real police raids that happen on people. They, this, is, this is actually the police of, in e each of these cases has gone into the wrong home or gone to the wrong person's house. Unfortunately, there are a few scenes in here where people are being killed and dogs are being shot. So this has been produced by uh, the Washington State publication Reason and it's Lindy with no knock raid that in this administration we have increased the amount of money for handling the problem of dangerous drugs sevenfold. It will be $600 million this year. More money will be needed in the future. I want to say, however, that despite our budget problems, to the extent money can help in meeting the problem of dangerous drugs, it will be available. This is one area where we cannot have budget cuts because we must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one in the United States, the problem of dangerous drugs. It's a no-knock raid. Don't be afraid. We'll shoot your dogs in front of your kids. Cause we are the SWAT. We're here for your part and all the cash that you've got. We are adrenaline junkies taking orders from the top. Oh, fuck! 
This is a war, and this is your fate. We are the face of your new police state. We are the law, and we've got the guns. Statutory power, mandatory minimums. We are the SWAT. We're here for your part, and all the cash that you've got. We are adrenaline junkies taking orders from the czar. It's a no-knock raid. Don't be afraid. Paramilitary police state on parade. It's a no-knock raid. Don't be afraid. You do the time for your victimless crime. And it's a no-knock raid. It's a no-knock raid. Don't be afraid, paramilitary police state on parade, flash bang on the ground, don't hear a sound, could be you, could be the mayor of your town, and it's a no-knock raid, it's a no-knock raid. So 70 to 80,000 raids like that take place here in America every year. And the vast majority are for marijuana crimes. In that last scene, an Iraqi war veteran had just come home from a 12-hour shift and was on his couch when the police kicked in the door and shot him 35 times. And so uh, this is one of the reasons we need to end adult marijuana prohibition. We need these police to concentrate on real criminals and to leave us alone and leave these innocent people alone and these families that have their, their children traumatized, their pets slaughtered, and their rights trampled upon. So uh, we urge you to vote yes on ballot measure 80. I think we have a phone call. Welcome to the show, caller. Hi, how are you guys doing? Pretty well. Um, you, That's you were talking news, before about the um, state of Oregon and Washington and the medical marijuana p permits not crossing over. Um, I just want to clear something up. It's my understanding that since you don't have to register in Washington, just have a written recommendation from the physician, and if you're like me with the physician being licensed in both states, then technically you're covered. Yeah, you're that's right. If you have a doctor who's licensed in both states, then you have a physician's authorization, and that's exactly right. That's what I, I had said earlier. Oh, I miss, must have missed that. I thought you were saying that you weren't covered, covered over there at all. So No, if you have a doctor who's licensed in Washington, and they've written out an authorization for medical marijuana for you, you're, you're legal in the state of Washington. Or okay. if you're a politician, okay. you can All get away right, with it for free. That up. Well, unlike that mayor, thank you. That mayor, he was shot by That's the police true. and murdered. You know, in that last scene where they killed that Iraqi war veteran, that was just about 14 months ago. This That's is a pretty true. new but I'm video. I'm thinking of, uh, like, you know, uh, Clinton and Obama, and, and then there's this... You know, I understand Gore was stopped by TSA and, and put through a strip search. So, uh, you know, it all depends on who you run into and what <laughs> power trip they want to run on you these days. But uh, so being a politician will not necessarily uh, save you in this case. So uh, I've got a, a lot of question, <laughs> says in Willamette Week, says you'll not be allowed to grow your own. I don't think it said that in Willamette Week, but under... Oregon's Measure 80, adults will be allowed to grow their own without any artificial limits on the amount of plants or marijuana they can possess. That's been something our opposition's used against us, in fact, but it has to be for non-commercial use. So you can't, like, grow 50 pounds and expect, hey, man, that's just for me. You, that, won't, that won't go over. So, uh, you know, it has to be for non-commercial use, and I anticipate that the legislature could impose a limit on that uh, but uh, time will tell. So uh, 
that is that one. We are down to just about two minutes left. So, well, Casper, you want to say anything in say, closing here? Speaking of time telling, there's always time for hemp Monday through Friday on AmericanFreedomRadio.com from 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard, 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard. Please tune in and tell your friends that it is always time for hemp. We are going out with another song with John Cornette and Troy. I want to thank you guys for watching. You know, I urge you to get out there and vote yes on Measure 80. Go to our website, vote80.org. Uh, you know, there's been a lot. Of, I think the biggest media story we've gotten over the past two weeks is we don't have any money. And I pretty much finance this from the meager profits of our medical marijuana clinic business. So I want to say thank you to all the patients that have helped us do that. But we don't have the money for a big advertising campaign. And the, the Washington Initiative was funded by the ACLU and some of the big funders. They designed it and they drove it from the very beginning. And the Colorado one was driven by the Marijuana Policy Project. So uh, those both qualified back in January and February. Ours qualified in mid-July. If you can help us in any way, go to our website, vote80.org, or give us a call at 503-235-4606. Thank you for watching. Tune in next week and help us. Restore him. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. And vote yes on Measure 80. Uh, this song is the, um, Paul asked uh, for me to uh, make this the theme song for the uh, Octa. All right. It's called Now's the Time. And I want to say one last thing. Uh, I was on 720 milligrams of Oxycontin a day. I was almost dead. And uh, if it had not been for cannabis, I probably would be dead. Uh, I'm hardly taking any uh, opioid medication today extremely small amounts compared to what I was taking and otherwise cannabis takes care of everything. Now is the time The time is now Tell the truth Thank you.